What's up, everybody? My name is Gabe Nekashea. I help people prepare for their preliminary actuarial exams. And in this video, I want to share with you four reasons 50% of actuarial test takers fail their exam. Yes, you heard that right. For some of the preliminary exams for actuarial, the pass rate hovers right around 50%. Now, if you're thinking about taking your first actuarial exam, you might wonder why the pass rate is so low. On the other hand, maybe you've taken an exam that didn't go so well and you want to improve your probability of success. Well, stay tuned because I'm gonna share with you four reasons you might not do so well on an actuarial exam. So reason number one, you don't give yourself enough time to prepare. Look, as an actuarial candidate, you're probably a busy person. You might have lots of opportunities coming your way or lots of interests and hobbies that are taking up a lot of your attention, or you have family responsibilities. All of those things are great, but they don't detract from the fact that to pass an actuarial exam, you need to devote a sufficient quantity of quality time. A lot of people talk about quantity versus quality. I want to emphasize quantity of quality. And one of the most important features of quality study time is consistency. If you don't set up a study schedule that allows you to consistently interact with the material, then you're just going to spend too much time reviewing material that you sort of forgot. That's just not an efficient way to study, and it's not going to set you up for success on your actuarial exam. Now, let me share an experience from my own life illustrating how important quantity of quality time is. After I passed exams P and FM, I figured it was time to sit for exam IFM. And I decided I would do this after studying for a 45-day window at the start of my last semester of graduate school. Now, at the same time, I was preparing my dissertation defense, giving attention to my teaching duties, applying for jobs, and trying to find an apartment halfway across the United States in what turned out to be a white hot housing market. Now, as you can imagine, I just had too much on my plate. And after a little bit of reflection, I realized that exam IFM was gonna have to wait. Looking back, it wasn't the 45 day window that was the issue, but rather the quantity of quality time that I could devote on each of those 45 days. For most of those days, the amount of time I was going to get to study was about an hour, either by waking up an hour earlier or putting it at the very end of the day when my quality uh, of attention was not so high. It turns out that a few months later, my life circumstances had changed. I was able to study for a few hours every day consistently, and a 45-day window was sufficient for me to pass exam IFM. Now, don't worry so much on how many days it took me to study. That's individual to me. The important thing is a quantity of quality time where you're consistently interacting with the material so that you're moving forward and not staying in one place. Okay, reason number two, you don't use the right resources. When I first decided I wanted to take an actuarial exam, I decided to do something I thought was very reasonable. I Googled exam FM textbooks. Now, I'm not going to share with you which textbook I got. I will say it was not uh, an SOA recommended syllabus text, but I will say that it was highly regarded, well-reviewed. Uh, the authors had impeccable credentials, and frankly, it was an excellent textbook, but it wasn't quite what I needed to get a successful start on actuarial exams. What I needed, and perhaps what you might need, is a study manual. Now, let me be very, very clear. Textbooks are not bad. In fact, textbooks are fantastic. For one, textbooks serve the purpose of supporting the instruction within a classroom where a professor can provide intuition. The issue for the actuarial exams is that a textbook's goals and benefits are not perfectly aligned with the objectives and requirements of the actuarial exam. Let me give a few examples of this concept. Textbooks can be rigorous when what you need is intuition. Textbooks can be understandably protective of the solutions to their exercises when what you need is immediate feedback to figure out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And finally, textbooks can provide you with absolutely essential 
conceptual understanding for the long term when what you need is practical skill that you can demonstrate on the exam. Now, a study manual addresses all of these issues. Study manuals are excellent at providing you with intuition. Study manuals come packed with practice problems and practice exams so that you can get immediate feedback on what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And finally, study manuals, though they will provide a good conceptual overview of material, are also going to emphasize developing those practical calculation skills that translate to exam success. Now, some people prefer to use question databases. And so, for example, you might be interested in Actex Goal, which comes with Goal Score. Actex Goal is a question database with immediate feedback, three modes of study, practice, quiz, and simulated exam. And goal score is a diagnostic tool that allows you to figure out what you're ready to sit for the exam and what topics you need more practice on. So you might want to consider checking out Actex goal, which comes with the Actex study manual program. Reason number three, you didn't balance reading and practice. Having now helped others prepare for the exams, I've seen two very common ways people misplace the emphasis on their study. The first place you might misplace emphasis is by failing to balance reading and practice. So this can happen in one of two ways. So let me begin by saying that reading is a great way to learn material. It's great exercise for your brain. And it's a great way to get a bird's eye view of a concept. I love reading. But reading is not a reliable indicator of exam readiness. And I think that happens for two reasons. First, when you're reading something passively, it's very easy for you to develop a false sense of understanding. You're not being challenged. And so you think that everything that's coming in is totally understandable. Second, understanding a concept doesn't necessarily translate to the exam because on an exam, the devil is in the details. And something I like to keep in mind for the exam is that it's more important to be correct than to be profound. As long as you're making the correct calculations, you don't have to be super clever with the concepts. So reading, though it's a great activity, and it's not something that you should shy away from, it's not a reliable indicator of exam readiness. Now, I said this could go either way, and it's true. You could also underemphasize reading and focus too much on practice. It's possible to rely solely on practice without developing a firm conceptual understanding. And the reason that's a problem is you might not grasp what was really important to solving a particular problem. If you practice the same thing over and over and over again, and you develop a rote memorization, you're going to really struggle, even if they change the problem just a little bit. Reading something substantial is important. You learn the concepts that way. Okay, so if we can get out of balance by reading too much, and we can get out of balance by reading too little, how do we strike a balance between reading and practice? Aim for active reading. Reproduce examples, solving them ahead of time if you can. Rewrite things, asking yourself, does this make sense? Derive some of the formulas and view the reading as leading into the practice sessions. Now, even very active reading won't necessarily get you ready for exam day. So be sure to incorporate additional exercises and practice exams. Okay, the fourth and final reason I wanna share with you why you might not do so well on your exam you overemphasize difficult topics and you underemphasize foundational topics. Now, I wanna say that this makes total sense. Big scary things attract a lot of attention, but here's the reality. On SOA exams, in order to pass, you need to build a solid capability across a broad array of topics in the syllabus. And a lot of these topics build on just a few foundational fundamental concepts. And what happens is that if you can achieve that solid capability across a broad array of topics by building your fundamentals, then if there's scary topic X or scary topic Y, you can sort of take it or leave it. 
you don't have to be perfect on the actuarial exam. You have to be moderately competent across a broad array of topics. And the best way to get there is to learn the fundamentals. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I wish you the best of luck in your studies. If you found this video helpful, will you subscribe to our YouTube channel and take a look at our Actex and ASM products to see if anything is right for you.